Good evening, Cecilia. It's Thursday, July 5th. I was going to do another kitchen chemistry experiment today for this video, but after yesterday's festivities, I woke up a little sick today. I'm not hungover. I wasn't drinking yesterday, but I've been um, on kind of a strict diet. Not really strict, but like I haven't been limiting necessarily what I eat, but I've been watching very carefully how much I eat, especially of like sweets and things that are bad for me. And yesterday I just decided to say screw you to the diet, which I've been doing for probably a little less than a year. And just eat however much of whatever I wanted that I wanted. And this morning I woke up and I was super sick because my body was like, you crammed so much junk into me yesterday. That's terrible. So I'm not feeling up to a kitchen chemistry today. Instead, I'm going to bring you the top five books that influenced my life ever. And this isn't like a top five list of my favorite books, like that's not what this is. Although a lot of these are my favorites, um, they're just the books that change the way I see reading or books or literature. And so that's what today is. Number one, The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This is, of course, my favorite young adult literature book of all time. Sorry, John Green, I love you to death, but you will not beat this book ever. Um, it was the first book that I think I ever really loved. It was the first book that I ever, because I've always been a reader ever since I was really, really little, but this was the first book that I ever, like, cried at the end. This was the first book that, I mean, I've read it so many times, like the pages are just stained. They're all crinkled because I've read it so many times and I've shared it with so many people. This is the first book that ever made me realize how powerful reading and books can be. And this has made a huge impact in the person I became. This is a book that changed the way I saw books and understood stories and understood characters and felt for characters in ways that I'd never had before. That's number one. I guess technically number five, because we're counting down, so number five. Okay, number four, Beloved by Toni Morrison. I read this um, in our AP English class in 12th grade. You were there with me. This was the first book that I understood as not just a text, but um, I understood it as a series of symbols as a series of allegories. One of the first books that I understood that there was more than just what was on the surface. There was the story and then there was everything underneath the story. There was um, Greek mythology thrown in. There were these symbols of color. There was um, African slave stories. There was um, just all kinds of stuff that it was under the surface and that was something I really loved about books and that's definitely one of the reasons that I chose to study English was because I loved discovering that underneath the story there's a whole just layer of activity. And this was the first book that I really felt that I was reading critically. So that was number four. Number three is Dubliners by James Joyce. Um, this is a series of 13 short stories about um, life in the turn of the century for Ireland. Specifically Dublin, that's why it's called Dubliners. It's a picture of Dublin. And this was a book that really helped me understand the way short stories work because I'd never really read a lot of short stories that were as well written as Dubliners. Um, I like short stories, but most of the time they're just fun for the story and there's not much underneath the surface. And James Joyce just took that like 1200 steps further. Every story, you could write a whole book about every story and some of them are like four pages long. This made me really understand how a short story can potentially um, just go above and beyond even a novel length work. 
and it really helped me discover a love for James Joyce and a love for Irish literature that I didn't know I would ever have. And if you are a fan of short stories and you haven't read Dubliners, it will be a treat for you. It will be the funnest thing you've ever done. Just take the time to do it. They're not long. This is 13 stories and it's less than 200 pages. So definitely a treat. Definitely one of the best collections of short stories I've ever read.